So this video lesson is all about the idea of a least common multiple. And before we get into the actual concept of a least common multiple, uh, I want to give you a quick problem to think about that it actually involves least common multiple, so you uh, may not know it right away. And that's uh, looking at this problem, which is sprinklers on a front lawn. Uh, and some of you might have sprinklers on your lawn somewhere. Um, but the idea that we're going to think about is, let's say that every four days the sprinkler activates to make sure the lawn gets water. If today is a Monday, which it may not be when you're watching this, but if today is a Monday and the sprinkler is active today, we want to know how many days will it take for the sprinkler to be active on Monday again, assuming that it only activates every four days. So go ahead, pause the video, uh, see what you can do in terms of thinking about this problem, uh, and then come back to start looking at uh, other ways of thinking about it. So one of the ways that you might go about this problem uh, is by creating a calendar. And on that calendar, uh, we would be able to track when the sprinkler is active. So today is a Monday, so the sprinkler is active on Monday. Four days from now would be a Friday. Four days later is a Tuesday, a Saturday, a Wednesday, a Sunday, a Thursday, and then finally a Monday again. So it's taken us all of this time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, sprinkler activations to come back to a Monday. And that's one, two, three, four weeks, or 28 days later, that the sprinkler will be active on a Monday again. Now, this is perfectly fine as an idea as long as we have small numbers. But if we don't have really small numbers, it will be very difficult for us to use this kind of idea. And so we need to find a better way of thinking about uh, finding out when two things happen again at the same time. For example, the sprinkler activates, which happens every four days, and it's a Monday. And to do that, we use an idea of a least common multiple. And so a multiple of a number is the product of that number and a whole number. So go ahead and pause the video, write this down, uh, and then come back when you're done so we can look at more specifically uh, and in some examples what a multiple is. So by definition of multiple, and this is the mathematical definition of it, is the product of that number and a whole number. So if we choose 3, then we can start multiplying 3 by some whole numbers. We have 3, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, 3 times 4, 3 times 5. These are our whole numbers here. We could use negative numbers if we want, but we'll stick with positive numbers for now. And we get 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So by definition, a multiple is the product of a number of some number and a whole number. And we call that the multiple of that first one. But really, if we think practically about how we've seen it, we can think of multiples as uh, sort of the copies of that number. For 3, we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, etc. It's all of the numbers that 3 is a factor of. Now since our whole number could be negative, we also have 0, negative 3, negative 6, negative 9, negative 12, etc. Uh, that we can think of and are in fact multiples of 3. So if we're looking for the multiple of a number, it's the set of all numbers that uh, that original number divides evenly into. Now when we get to variable expressions, we're looking at some different types of uh, things, uh, but that's what we're looking at with whole numbers. And so just like with factors, we can talk about common multiples uh, and what we call least common multiples, because in this case we're not going to find a greatest common multiple. We'll talk more about that in class. We're instead going to find a least common multiple. So go ahead, pause the video, uh, and write down these two definitions. So now let's take, let's take a look at the idea of common multiples and least common multiples by trying to find the LCM, which is our abbreviation for least common multiple, of 12 and 5. Uh, so pause the video, see what you can do, see what strategies you could come up with with trying to find the number that is a multiple of both 12 and 5 and is as small as we can possibly make it. So one of the strategies you might try is by listing all of the multiples of 12 and 5. And so for 12, we have 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72, etc. And we might 
uh, recognize one of those as a multiple of 5 already, but let's say we didn't. And we can list all the multiples of 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, etc. And then we can compare the lists of multiples. This a uh, problem that we have here already illustrates one of the difficulties with this method is that we've listed eight multiples of five and we haven't found anything that's comparable to a multiple of 12. It would take 12 multiples of five to get to 60, which is also a multiple of five. And so 60 is the first multiple that we see in common between 12 and 5. Another way we could do it is using mental math, where we could look at 12 and 5 and say, well, we know if we multiply those two together, we'll come up with a multiple. May not be the least multiple, but we'll come up with a multiple. And it turns out that this one is. So again, much like when we were finding the greatest common factor, where we have some problems with having to know exactly what the factors are to be able to list them. And in this case, we have listing the multiples, and we may have to list them for quite a long time. We need to come up with a better way of finding the least common multiple. And when we do that, we're going to use the prime factorization just like we do with the greatest common factor. Now before we get into how the prime factorization works, I'm going to tell you a quick story. And that story is going to give us the idea of a least common multiple. Let's say that you wanted to paint a picture. And in that picture, you needed six colors. Red, orange, yellow, blue, green, and purple. Those were the colors that you had to work with. But you wanted to make your palette as clean as possible and only have as much paint as you need. One way of doing that would be just to have a little bit of each color and hope you uh, can make it work. But if we remember the color wheel when it comes to physical colors and painted colors, we have our three primary colors in red, yellow, and blue. And we can use those primary colors to make our secondary colors. Red and uh, yellow make orange, yellow and blue make green, and blue and purple, or blue and red rather, make purple. So if we were actually going to use only these six colors and we wanted the smallest number of colors on our palette as possible, we would actually only need, get that triangle out of there, red, yellow, and blue. Because red and yellow can help us make orange. Yellow and blue can have us make green. And red and blue can have us make purple. And that's really an idea that is very similar to the least common multiple. We're trying to find a number, a collection of primes, that allows us to create either of those two numbers. But we want to be as small as we possibly can. In this paint example, to get red, yellow, blue, green, orange, and purple, all we need are red, yellow, and blue because we can get the secondary colors from the primary ones. Now, if that doesn't make sense right now in terms of prime factorization, that's totally fine. Let's take a look at an example of how to do that uh, and then see if that makes more sense. So with 12 and 5. The prime factorization of 12 is 2 squared times 3, or 4 times 3. Let's move 5 over here. The prime factorization of 5 is 5. Now, when we're looking at our LCM for a least common multiple, we want a collection of primes that is enough to make 12 or 5, but we don't want any extra. Now, for 12, we need two 2s and a 3. So we're going to need to include everything for 12. And for 5, we just need a 5. So in order to look at these primes that we're looking at for our LCM, we need to be able to find a 12, which is here, and find a 5, which is here, and there are no extras. We don't have any extra 2s, we don't have any extra 3s, we don't have any extra 5s. So the LCM really is all of those primes multiplied together, which gives us 60. Let's take a look at another example where it's not going to be quite so straightforward. Here, we're looking for the least common multiple of 21 and 14. Now, 21's prime factorization is 3 times 7, and 14's is 2 times 7. So when we're finding our LCM, we just want to find the collection of primes so that we have enough to make 21 and enough to make 14. Well, in order to make 21, we need a 3 and a 7. Now, in order to make 14, we need a 2 and a 7. 
But since we already have this 7 as a part of our LCM, because we took it from the 21, we don't need to add that 7 back again. Because if we wanted to make 14 out of 2, 3, and 7, we could just take the 2 and the 7. That gives us 14. If we wanted to take the 21, we could just take the 3 and the 7, which gives us 21. So here we have the 2 from the 14, we have the 3 from the 21, and we only need 1 7 because the 21 and the 14 both only need 1 7. So this is enough, a 2, a 3, and a 7, in order to make the LCM, which is 42. So what does that look like in terms of the paint analogy? Well, this is, uh, this is like having the 7 that's shared between the 21 and the 14 being one of these secondary colors. We don't need the orange as long as we have the red and the yellow. We don't need the full 14, the 2 and the 7, as long as we have the 7 from the 21. So we only need one 7, we don't need both, and then we can take pieces away to make the 14 and the 21. So the LCM is 42. One more example before I uh, send you off to work on the problem on your own. So for 12, we have 2 squared times 3. It's one of our favorite numbers to find the factorization of. 15, we have 3 times 5. So what does this mean in terms of our LCM? Instead of thinking about it number by number, let's do it prime by prime. When it comes to twos, in order to make 12, we need two of those twos. We don't need any twos to make 15, so we just need two twos, and then we're guaranteed to, make, to be able to make a 12, as long as we have some other things. As far as threes, both 12 and 15 have a three. And so in order to make 12 or 15, we only actually need one of those threes in that prime factorization. Because if we have the 3 to make 12, we can use that same 3 to make 15. And then finally, 13 re or 15 requires a 5, so we need that 5 there. So outlined in black in this LCM is how we make 15. Outlined in yellow is how we can make 12. And since we only need one 3 for each of them, we only need one 3 in our LCM. And so all together, this multiplies together to be 60, which is the LCM of 12 and 15. So basically, we're just looking for the number of each prime that we need to make either a 12 or a 15. Uh, and so go ahead, pause the video, and see what you can do with these four least common multiple problems. Find the LCM of 25 and 15, 32 and 30, 8 and 56, and 9 and 10. Okay, so remembering that we're using prime factorizations here, 25 is 5 squared, 15 is 3 times 5. So in our LCM, we need the 3 for the 15, and we need two 5s. 15 only requires one 5, so if we have two of them, that's enough. Two of them make 25, which is in green. We can take the 3 and one of those 5s to make 15, so the LCM is 3 times 5 squared. All of this or 75. Uh, moving now to 32 and 30. 32 is 2 to the fifth power. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Uh, 30, let's move that number back over here. 30 is 5 times 6, which is 2 times 3 times 5. So in our LCM, we need five twos from the 30, because that's the greater number of twos. That means we are automatically given that one two for the 30, rather five twos for the 32. We need one three, and we need one five. Together we can make the 32, which is the black two to the fifth, or we can borrow one of those twos and then take the three and the five to make the 30. And we don't have any extra here, uh, we just have what we need. And so the uh, least common multiple here is actually, um, 2 to the 5th, which is 32, times 3 times 5, which is 15, or 480. Least common multiple. And that would involve a lot of writing multiples if we tried to do that just by writing. Now, 8 is 2 to the 3rd. 56 is 2 to the 3rd times 7, because it's 8 times 7. And so in our least common multiple, for 2s, we need 3 2s for both the 8 and the 56, and we need the 7. So our LCM in this case is actually 56. 
uh, because 8 is a factor of 56. And then for 9 and 10, 9 is 3 squared, 10 is 2 times 5. That means in our LCM, we need 1, 2 from the 10. We need 3 squared for the 9 and a 5 which gives us an LCM of 90. So again, when we're finding the LCM using the um, prime factorizations, we're just looking for how many of each prime it is that we need to make either of the two numbers that we're looking at. If the two numbers have the same types of primes, we just need to take the bigger one, because like in 32 and 30, if 32 needs five twos or 30, and 30 only needs one, if we take the five from 32, we're guaranteed to be able to make the 32, but then also have enough twos to make the 30 if we want to.